Welcome everybody to the Captain Spot. I'm your host, Justin Freeman. Six foot one inches, 273 pounds of fantasy knowledge. And we have a very special Monday night show for you tonight. Monday night's always available right here on Mayo Media Network. Be sure you're subscribed here. Make sure you check out the Thursday and Sunday night shows over on the Captain Spot YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash the CPT spot. Subscribe to both places. Make sure you like the videos as you're checking them out. Or if you're a podcast person, you can check out the Captain Spot podcast available wherever podcasts are found. But we've got a really unique game for you here on Monday Night Football. It's Falcons at Packers, 56 and a half point total in this game. Packers favored at home by seven and a half points. Packers looking great. Aaron Rodgers looking like the Aaron Rodgers of old, having a renaissance late in his career. Matt Ryan drops back and throws the ball 100 times a game. We've got Calvin Ridley breaking out. We've got injuries across the board. We've got a really, really great slate for us to break down here. So uh, without further ado, let's hop into the injury report. And as of right now, we do have game status availability here Saturday afternoon from the Falcons side of the football. We do not have that yet on the Packers side. So I'll give you as much information as I know. Uh, the bulk of it's going to come around to this receiver position for the Falcons. We have three starting wide receivers and uh, Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones, and Russell Gage. And they all do carry a game, des- excuse me, two of the three carry a game designation. Calvin Ridley and Julio Jones both listed as questionable in this game. It would be my expectation that both of these guys play perhaps in a slightly limited role. Russell Gage was injured earlier in this week, had a concussion, and has since cleared concussion protocol. He no longer carries a game designation, so he is wheels up, good to go. Uh, Young Wei Ku, the kicker for the Falcons, also out this game. He'll be replaced in this contest by Elliot Fry, so make sure you're keeping that in your uh, arsenal as we're making lineups. Be sure you're looking for the name Elliot Fry there on the Atlanta side. Uh, Todd Gurley also was on the injury report. That's just a rest day from Saturday. Nothing to see there. That'll cover it for our skill position players, which is uh, the the bulk of what we're going to care about here on this show. On the Packers side, we do have some receiver injuries to keep an eye on. Um, Obviously, Alan Lazard is out this game. We do not have that official designation, but he is considered out indefinitely with a core injury. Sounds pretty rough, uh, honestly, for Alan Lazard. So we will see Devontae Adams return this game more than likely. He has a hamstring injury. He got back-to-back limited practices Thursday, Friday. There's no reason to expect he wouldn't be available to go in this game. Uh, Josiah DeGara and Mercedes Lewis, a pair of tight ends in this contest. Uh, Both are going to pop up here on the injury report. Uh, As of the time that we have this information, we have Thursday, Friday practice information for the Packers. And Mercedes Lewis did not practice Thursday or Friday. Um, He is a veteran. It could be possible that they're just playing it playing it safe with him. Uh, DeGaro worries me a little bit, but he uh, he did get in a limited practice on Friday. So we may see him returning. Honestly, you know, I always talk about how the fringe guys, like, nobody, nobody's playing Josiah DeGara, right? But what did it mean last week when Josiah DeGara was declared inactive before the game? Well, it probably put you a little bit more towards Robert Tanyan, the lead tight end in this offense. And all of a sudden, Robert Tanyan, really, really interesting. And Robert Tanyan, of course, was in the winning lineup. So if we're paying attention to these really, really small differences at the end of the roster, uh, it can. And if Mercedes Lewis is out and, and Josiah DeGara is out again, we need to be thinking about Robert Tanyans and Jay Sternbergers and those players uh, in the arsenal. And, and obviously, we're thinking about ways that we can replace Alan Lazard. We're thinking contingency plans as it relates to Calvin Ridley and Julio Jones. There's a lot for us to think about on a slate like this one. But it is a 56.5 point total. That's that's rocket ship status. This is, this is as good as it gets. Um, that's a super high total. Obviously, we're thinking a lot of offense. I will say, like again, I don't talk kickers and defenses a ton, but think about a way that a defense could actually pop off in this game is actually kind of interesting. You know, we're expecting a lot of dropbacks, um, unless maybe the Packers get out and milk a lead behind Aaron Jones or something like that. We're expecting a ton of dropbacks from both these teams, so uh, just keep that in mind as ways this game can play out. Dropbacks, obviously, something we're super interested in uh, when it comes to finding finding good defenses. So let's hop into the DraftKings player pricing. Make sure we have a really good understanding of. You know, who are the expensive players on this slate? How do we take advantage of salaries? Who's more likely to pop into the captain spot? Uh, How does the slate as a whole sort of mesh together? And we'll start at the quarterback position where obviously we're looking at Aaron Rodgers versus Matt Ryan. And this is sort of a preeminent matchup. And this is like a 10 years ago, this would have been an even better matchup perhaps. But we are seeing Matt Ryan get quite a bit of volume there in the air 
and that makes him really interesting. He's a guy that my DFS models like each and every week, you know, just on like Sunday main slate because his volume so good and his volume is like of such high quality to, to high quality receivers and Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley. And we throw Russell Gage, he's performing well as well. Like Matt Ryan's a capable passer and he can pay off his $10,000 salary pretty easily. It costs you a little bit more for Aaron Rodgers, 11400 but Aaron Rodgers getting there on some pretty tremendous efficiency at the moment. Um, obviously we're, we're going to get some possible value opening up as far as the secondary pass catching options on the Packers side of the football. But I think this is a slate where salary is going to come into the equation for sure. We're going to have to get, um, you know, really unique in how we're thinking about how to round out our rosters. We're either going to have to go stars and scrubs, or we're going to have to just drop down our general expectation and, you know, leave one of these quarterbacks out of the lineup or leave one of these really, really good pass catchers. We don't have enough salary nor roster spots to play everybody that we'd probably really like to. Um, as we look at the running backs in this game, Aaron Jones will cost you $10,800. He is the most expensive skill player on the board behind those quarterbacks and, uh, and his teammate, Devontae Adams, who we are expecting back at the moment, $10,400. Uh, I like both of those guys, and I think this game script favors Aaron Jones. We've seen Aaron Jones also be incredibly efficient. That's the one thing I tried to you know, focus on this week over at Number Ball in my write-ups was we're at the point in the season where we're starting to understand which teams are capable of performing at a really high level of efficiency week in, week out. Like there's Some, some teams are going to play better than a projection can even allow them to. To, to show up on paper. And, and the Packers may be one of those teams. They've looked really, really good. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, uh, tremendous. He's PFF's highest graded quarterback at the moment. And uh, that's saying something in a league that contains Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, Cam Newton, you know, the list goes on. Like Aaron Rodgers playing out of his mind right this second, Russ Wilson. Um, so, you know, I think having Aaron Rodgers in the lineup obviously makes a lot of sense and it's tough to play Aaron Rodgers lineup without Devontae Adams because that's where all the targets are going to go so you can see really quickly like we have a lot to like on this like like I like Aaron Rodgers and I like Aaron Jones and I like Devontae Adams but they're the three most expensive players on the slate I'm going to have to find some value somewhere and I think figuring out what to do with this receiver rotation on the Falcon side is going to be key now, Julio Jones is quite clearly banged up right now. I mean, obviously he's on the injury report, as is Calvin Ridley, but it, we're kind of due at some point to either have a, have a realization that Julio is just not going to be the same uh, for the foreseeable future as long as he's nursing this injury, or he's going to return back to being the Julio of old, in which case this $8,600 uh, price points kind of a hedge right there in the middle right like if he were playing like julio of old you know julio of even last year he'd be priced you know fairly similar to Devonte adams at 10-4 but he's down at 8-6 that's kind of a a hedge and and i think that's the right way to approach what to expect from julio you've got to kind of hedge it um but know that in showdown like we get one chance at this we need to either be right or wrong when it comes to julio jones and uh you know calvin ridley his teammate teammate will be $1,000 and probably under a similar limitation. Uh, we can get down to Russell Gage at $6,200 to round out that rotation. That probably becomes pretty interesting, and that might be the type of decision we have to make. Like, all right, you can give me the one guy who's healthy in that three-man rotation, and he's going to be at least $2,400 cheaper than the, the second-priced Julio Jones. So that might be one of the, you know, as we talk about ways to get uh, sort of sacrificial with our with our salaries, we may have to come down to a player like Gage instead this week. So, um, and, and then sort of rounding out the viable pass catchers is Hayden Hurst, priced down at 5,400. And, you know, we haven't seen a ton of reliable volume from Hayden Hurst. I was really, really in on Hurst last week, but only got three targets. He caught one. It was a one yard touchdown. Like, I mean, it was as tight end of a line as you could possibly have. Uh, but the week before, he got eight targets, five the week before that. Um, it is a high-powered, high-volume passing offense, so there's an opportunity for him to carve out some targets, especially if a couple guys are, are limited, but I, I really would have hoped he would have done so already, so I do have some trepidation there about firing up a guy like Hayden Hurst. Um, as we look at some of the like bargain bin options there on the Atlanta side, Brian Hill, he is involved in the run game in this offense. $2,800, you're pretty much banking on him being able to score a touchdown in this contest. And and I know he busted a long one last game, but I don't think that's uh, the best use of your funds over there at $2,800. 
Uh, Olamide Zacchaeus is 2,200. He actually is a guy who, uh, if you play this game out, you know, thousands of times uh, with two injured star receivers, he pops into that winning ro roster quite a bit. Like there's a direct path for him to just see more snaps this game because Ridley and Julio were both injured and at 2,200, uh, easy to see him popping off. Um, and then, you know, after that, it gets really, really ugly on the Atlanta side. They have a really tight target tree. You know who is getting the ball. So you don't want to go down so far low as, as Brandon Powell. You don't want to go to the third running back and Edo Smith. We just want to stay away from those guys and, and try to get different elsewhere, probably picking up a cheaper Packer somewhere along the way. And as we look at the Packers, um, obviously we're probably going to project a, an increased role for Marquez Valdez-Scantling this week. $7,000 for him. That's you know, that's, that's more than I want to pay for a player of Valdez-Gantling's um, you know, skill set, but he is going to get some degree of usable targets there in that offense. Robert Tanyan, obviously operating as the de facto t starting tight end there, got five targets last week, call all five for 50 yards and a touchdown. He'll cost you 4600 this week. I, I like Tanyan, but I like playing him a lot better when he's down in the like the two thousand dollar range instead of this uh, forty six hundred dollar range. Uh, Jamal Williams still very much involved in the run game here. Had six carries last week, eight the week before, seven the week before that. So we can see him get involved, uh, but it's obviously going to traditionally flow through Aaron Jones. I think Jamal Williams could set up nicely as an option where we're predicting a, a heavy beatdown, uh, where, where Jamal Williams can kind of do some mop-up duty uh, throughout the second half of that game. I mentioned Jay Sternberger. He is really interesting to me. At $1,400, if we can project Mar Mercedes Lewis uh, and Josiah DeGara as out in this game, Sternberger at $1,400 becomes one of my favorite value plays on the board. Um, you know, It's just going deep and, and understanding that he is going to get some snaps. He is involved in this passing game. And so I want to get a piece of that whenever I can. So, um, you know, as if I look back at uh, some of the, the usage throughout this year, we see that you know, we are getting some snaps out of this tight end group, including, you know, Tanyan at 63% last week, uh, Sternberger at 32%. So 10% uh, of targets for Sternberger as well to go with that. So he's getting some run. He's out there. And in a game where we don't see Mercedes Lewis taking any targets or anything like that, uh, he can he can obviously pay it off. You know, 7% of targets last week went to Mercedes Lewis. And if you tell me that his targets get split up among the other tight ends in that group, then Sternberger becomes obviously pretty interesting. So without further ado, let's make sure we are looking at our captain assignments for this week. Understanding we are running 10,000 simulations here to determine, uh, you know, and creating an optimal lineup off of each one of those to determine who's more likely to be the captain in this particular game. And it's Mr. Aaron Jones. Who's most likely to do that this week? He is going to pop in over 20% of our, excuse me, uh, over 17.5%. So probably right around 18%. Of our of our uh, lineups this week, Aaron Jones is going to be the number one option at the captain, followed by Matt Ryan. And we don't normally see quarterbacks quite this high on our captain distribution, but I think this makes sense when we consider the multitude of options that Ryan has to throw to. His targets do not go concentrated to a single player. At least that's not what we're anticipating in this game. So he could pay off both, you know, Ridley and Julio, for example, and make Ryan himself the number one option there at the captain spot. Uh, after Ryan is Calvin, excuse me, Devontae Adams, then Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones. And then we have a pretty decent drop off before we get to Aaron Rodgers. And I think that's a, a testament to, you know, the, each team's preference in terms of run pass. We are expecting the Falcons to be a bit more pass heavy in the in the. Packers to lean a bit more on the run game. And so I'm happy all the time whenever we can see, um, you know, results that affect how we'd anticipate this game to play out. And if we look at the flex appearances, Matt Ryan's our number one option in the flex, followed by Aaron Rodgers. We love it to see that both the quarterbacks there as one, two in the flex. We, we like playing quarterback flex. Uh, going double dip here, I think, makes a lot of sense. And then Aaron Rodgers, excuse me, Aaron Jones after that, although we like Jones better as the captain selection. Um, but you see, like, here's where we get, you know, really unique and interesting with our, uh, you know, sort of bargain bin options. Elliot Fry is one, two, three, four, five, sixth on this list, followed by Olamide Zacchaeus, followed by Hayden Hurst. So we've got a couple cheaper guys there. 
as we start to figure out how an optimal lineup fits together. And you know, I'm obviously a fan of leaving some cash on the table to get unique in these formats, but this seems like a really, really difficult one to do so. You know, I, I have a feeling that the winning lineup in this particular contest is not going to leave more than say $500 on the table. Um, I just think there's there's too much talent to have to pay for. Pricing's really, really difficult. And so I think we're gonna need to use the vast, vast majority of that this week. So. We've got an interesting one. We've got a lot of injuries to account for. This is going to be a true skill test. And so I uh, hope everybody does really well this weekend. Make sure you are following me on Twitter at Justin Freeman 18. You can get really bad tweets and sometimes useful news and updates before games kick off. And I'll be sure to help you guys with that. And make sure you're subscribed over on the Captain Spot YouTube channel as well. So on behalf of everybody over here at the Captain Spot, which is just me, by the way, <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see you guys later. See you next week.